Hi guys, welcome back to the Ultimate Decades Challenge Berry Style. We're currently in the year 1321 and this is the year that our dear, dear Sybil gets married and she is engaged to Frederick Fairfield of the Fairfield family. So today is officially her wedding day. So I'm just going to let them, you know, do some things around the house and then we're going to go ahead to Sybil's wedding, which we're so excited about. It's been a long time coming. Oh my god, wait. Clementine is now in the first trimester and should schedule a first pre Oh my gosh, so Clementine's pregnant again? More babies? Okay guys, I'm so ready. I'm over these babies, but I'm ready for more babies. I think at this point, I don't really care if it's a boy or a girl because they have three boys. Unfortunately, poor Tristan died last episode, their oldest boy, but we still have three boys. So I feel like we're okay if Clementine has a girl this time. So I'm I'm kind of okay either way. But I mean, these guys are still babies. So Lord knows what's gonna happen once they age up. And Bluebell is just looking for some love. She is in the mood. <laughs> Poor Bluebell. <laughs> okay, now Sybil's done with the washing. I'm just gonna get her to hang it up and then we're gonna go ahead and do her wedding. And Sybil is so excited for this next phase of her life. She is, she's gonna go into like the middle class, kind. well, I guess they're like middle, upper middle class household. It's, they've got a beautiful big house. So she's really excited to like get out of this poverty lifestyle and move up a little bit in the world. Okay, so now she's done with all of that and we're gonna go ahead and do her wedding. So the church is still decorated um, for the wedding between Eleanor and, God, what is her husband's name? Eleanor and Nicholas. And we still need it because Edward has to get married tomorrow, I believe. So Sybil gets to have a beautifully decorated wedding, which I think she's very happy about as well. And because the weddings are glitchy, I swear this is coded as the wedding arch, but for some reason, and, um, it's saying when I'm trying to get everyone to sit down that there is no wedding arch so I don't really know what's going on there so everyone's just kind of like standing at the top of the aisle which I mean if they want to watch it from there that's their own choice and so we get to watch Miss Sybil walking down the aisle with her future husband Frederick and they're both really into this they're both really excited to be here look at them they're so cute okay guys now stop walking away because I need you to come up here <laughs> now I don't know how to get them up there because the wedding arch isn't working but I'm gonna get them to exchange their vows okay so we're having our first kiss over here this is the wedding kiss and they are officially married and his hat is glitching really badly this is these weddings never go to plan do they oh they have a sentiment for each other what do they have deeply connected okay so i think they're both super happy about this i am going to let sybil now move into the uh Fre into frederick fairfield's household so she can officially live in her beautiful big house and nobody's really paying attention. I thought everyone would be really happy for her, but everyone's just sort of like catching up, I guess. So now Sybil and Frederick are officially married and Sybil has moved into the Fairfield household and it is a beautiful house. It is so big compared to what she's used to. I mean, it's big for me. <laughs> I think it's a big house. There's a lot of rooms. They have, oh, Sybil has learned about Frederick's mess around interest. So we're about to find out more in a minute. Um, so they have this little like embroidery and weaving room. Cause Sybil does like weaving and they have like a little flower arranging room. Um, obviously quite a few bedrooms. And then upstairs, this room, I don't even know what to put in here, but over here we have like a little temple for them to practice their religion. And they actually own a Bible, which for this period, was very bougie to own your own Bible because they didn't have like a printing press so you literally had to commission someone to like write it out by hand and they're usually very like detailed and artistic and they cost a lot of money so that's kind of like a sign that they're pretty like well to do like they're pretty upper upper middle class I would say and look she's even got her own bathtub that is so cool and then over here is kind of like the family's more like casual hanging out area so now that they're married we have to roll to see how many baby tries or how many pregnancies they get to have so we're gonna roll a d10 and if it's between two to ten that says how many pregnancies they're able to have and if it's a one that means they don't have any children so so we're gonna get our dice roll, we're gonna roll our d10, and we are rolling a 2. So they get to have two pregnancies, which isn't a lot, but it's better than nothing. So we're gonna get started on the first one right now. 
And I think these two are pretty excited to consummate their marriage. <laughs> yeah, like they're very, very into each other. I know Sybil found him very attractive, but he also finds her very attractive. So they're very excited about this whole consummation situation. I think that went very well. Feeling fulfilled. So I think um, Clementine and Alaric have been having a little bit of woohoo issues, but these guys don't have any. They are both like very into this. And this bed is like eating them alive. This is so bad for clipping, but it looks good. And look, Sybil is even able to learn to play the harp. So, oh my god, no one likes me. No one will ever like me. Why bother with anything anymore? You just got married. Um, and she's like, I will always love you. So cute. Um, Sybil is enjoying playing the harp. So she's taking up all these like wifely skills. So because Sybil is so excited to be in a new home, I think I'm going to have her invite over the Hawthorne family, our original family, so that they can kind of come over and enjoy the food, enjoy the splendors. So Sybil is just cooking them some Yorkshire pudding. We already have Alaric here and Geraldine and Clementine are also on their way at the moment. Uh, we didn't invite Grace because Grace and Sybil don't get along. So Sybil is very specifically like, I do not want Grace to share in this joy at all. Like, I do not want her here. It looks like they're all coming to sit down to enjoy dinner. And Clementine, here's Geraldine, and Clementine's coming over as well. It's so nice when they're all able to actually, like, enjoy a meal together. And they ate that very quickly. So they're all going to go upstairs to play, play a game together. And Edith's going to play the harp for everyone. But I will say, I don't think Edith has much of a harp skill going. So it's kind of cute watching them all play together in this like beautiful scenery. It's a lot nicer than the, um, than the mud hut. And I think her family is just really happy to see her here and see her happy and, you know, in this beautiful environment. And it's something they couldn't have for themselves, but they were like, you know, more than willing to make happen for Sybil. Except for Grace. Grace didn't want Sybil to have anything good because her and Grace hate each other. And Sue was just making sure that she tells her wedding story again, even though it just happened and they were just there. She needs to like let them know exactly how she was feeling when everything happened. I might let Edith come down and like grab a serving because she is actually quite hungry. And you know, this doesn't have to go on for too long, but I just wanted to give these guys a quick chance to catch up while Sybil settles into her married life. I think they've had a lovely dinner. I'm gonna end it and send them all home. And look, wait, we got a gold dinner party. So you earned a little reward. <laughs> I think it's a coffee maker, which I mean, they wouldn't have even had a coffee maker, so it doesn't really matter, but it's nice to know that our dinner party was successful and everyone enjoyed themselves, you know? Okay, Sybil can wash up the dishes because now that's her new duty. Oh, is that on a sink in here? Oh, you know what I forgot to put in here? I forgot to put in a sink. Okay, that actually would have been helpful because now she's got to go like all the way to the bathroom. Okay, I fixed that. Now there's a sink in the kitchen for them to wash the dishes with. How is she still hungry? She just had a dinner party where she had access to like so much food, more food than she's ever been able to eat in her life. That's okay. I might let her have another meal and then I might put them all to bed. I like how everyone's just sitting around watching it. Okay, I'm going to put you all to bed. <gasps> Wait, what is this sentiment? Oh, um, Gaia, the mother, did not like Alaric. I can't see, like, what happened exactly, but I can see the sentiment, and I know she's got a bad sentiment, so I'm guessing that's about Alaric. So, I didn't tell you guys this, but this is Edith, obviously, um, Sybil's new sister-in-law, but she's actually engaged to be married to Edward Devereux. So, tomorrow is going to be their wedding, and Edward's quite enamored with Edith. I can't say that Edith feels the same. She finds him unattractive, but he is the king, so she's going to get married to him. And so Edith's gonna have lovely dreams tonight in her glitchy bed. And Sybil's gonna have lovely dreams with her new husband who she actually is attracted to and loves very much. Oh wait, before we hit midnight, um, Viola actually has to give birth. So I'm gonna go do that quickly as well. So Viola is ready to give birth. However, Hippolyta, the youngest baby Hippolyta technically ages up tomorrow. However, I'm gonna do it now just so we can use the same crib and just get it all out of the way really quickly. So we're gonna do our death rolls for Hippolyta. Get away that and we're gonna roll our d20 and we are rolling a six, which is fine. So Hippolyta gets to age up. I swear these guys have the best luck with their age ups and their births and their death rolls. Viola is just like, thank God I don't have to deal with a baby anymore. And then it's like, girl, you're about to give birth. You poor thing. She doesn't like children. 
this is like just a running joke at this point that all of her kids like survive except for the famine she did lose two during the famine oh my god she's so cute okay so we have to flip for her genetics because custom genetics are broken and so we're flipping for her hair a head so she's got viola's hair and this is the first purple hair that we've had since the twins so i'm really happy about that and then now we're gonna do her eyes really quickly as well and she's getting her mother's eyes so she's actually got quite a few genetics i think she's got the green eyes quite a few genetics for her mother so here we have little hippolita and she is adorable so cute i don't know who she's gonna look like but um she's already so cute look at her look at her little ponytail i just love it she's adorable okay and now viola's ready to have a baby and if this baby lives again it's gonna be so funny because viola is just overwhelmed with all of these children it's not that she doesn't love her children it's just she wasn't quite prepared for rolling nine pregnancies and then having twins and also having all of them survive and they have a boy that's so so exciting so the last name is Hawthorne now I'm gonna call him Lysander which is another Midsummer Night's Dream name but it was also the name of Viola's father so it kind of fits in with a the theme but also it's like a nice little ode to um, Viola's father who is deceased so it just had a little baby boy and she does look happy despite you know the whole not liking children thing but now we have to do our death roll so who knows how this is going to turn out first we're going to roll for viola and we're rolling a four so she's fine never had anyone die of pregnancy complications so we're really lucky in that regard and now we're going to roll for the baby little lysander who's rolling a four so i don't know what kind of blessing they have but they have the best luck with babies and look we did it all before midnight so i made it just in time excellent so i'm going to leave them to bond and i will see you guys in the morning. Here we are in the Devereux household. It's day two and it is time. Well, today is the day that Edward is going to get married to Edith Fairfield and he is quite enamored with Edith. He perceives her as attractive even though she thinks that he's unattractive. So obviously he was much more into her but she's not going to say no to the king. I mean, come on. She doesn't really have much of a choice in the matter. Now before we have the wedding, we do have, okay, come up here. Beatrice is asleep but she has to give birth today as well well and then tomorrow we have leopold aging up leopold ii but i might just do it today so we can get it all over and done with in one day so i'm going to start by aging up leopold she like doesn't want to interact with him at all but i think she'll be fine to age him up actually i forgot to do the role so <laughs> whoops okay hopefully this comes out okay because i probably should have done this before aging him up but we're rolling for a toddler so we're rolling the d20 and we're getting a three so we would have aged up fine anyway it all works out and of course we have to do our coin flip for genetics so we're starting out with his hair and we're getting a his father's hair so his father has the yellow hair and then for his eyes we are getting his mother's eyes what color eyes does beatrice have okay so she has number four okay so he's kind of adorable little baby leopold i'm kind of he's got like the chubbiest little cheeks he's so cute so now leopold's aged up it's time for beatrice to give birth and hopefully this one lives as well because she's not had the best luck with the baby so far so they just had a little boy and we're gonna call him thomas Devereux, little baby thomas and again she's not happy about this it's so funny having like the woohoo wellness mod where they just like don't like having babies and then playing it in medieval times when they have to have babies um they don't really have a choice in the matter anyway i'm gonna do the death rolls so we're gonna get up our dice and we're gonna get up our numbers and first we're gonna roll for beatrice you know what i just um installed g-shade because i was like sick of having to do the colors in post and it kind of keeps adding these like depth of field things and I don't like it because everything gets really blurry. I'm just like, what is going on? So I keep having to turn it off and then it turns itself back on again and I'm just like, oh my gosh. Anyway, we're gonna do our death roll. So first we're gonna roll for Beatrice and we are rolling a six, so she's fine, of course. And now we're rolling for Thomas and he's rolling a seven, which is not a good number. Oh my God, these guys really have the worst luck with babies. Oh, Beatrice. She's like, she's happy about this. She's not that worried about it. So Thomas passes away and Beatrice is... Beatrice needs to use the bathroom. She don't even think she's worried about the baby. Oh my gosh, you need to really use the bathroom and eat. 
I feel like Leopold's a lot more forgiving than Florent though. I don't think he's as mad at Beatrice as Florent was at um, Emilia. Even though Emilia gave Florent children, he was still really annoyed with her. She is just like trying to get to that bathroom in time. Okay, I'm gonna let them get their needs up and then we are going to have the wedding of Edward. So it's a pretty intimate wedding of just Edward and Edith. Only uh, Beatrice and Leopold came to watch because Eleanor is all over in France. She's not going to come over just for this and she doesn't really like Edward that much anyway. And it was a good thing we kept it all decorated, but it is a shame how I can't get them to like get married at the wedding arch. That would have been really nice. So these two are going to exchange their vows, you know, anywhere in the church, I guess. It doesn't really matter. Why does Edith look so sad? Her face is just like, I don't want to be here. Okay, now she's turning on the charm a little bit. And they're having their first kiss. And he's really happy about this. She's just sort of like, well, I guess I get to be a queen now. So, mm, mm, mm. So now Edward and Edith get to consummate their marriage, but first is going to determine how many pregnancy tries they are allowed to have. We all know the drill by now, we basically just roll a d10 and it determines the number of children. So, oh my gosh, wow, so it seems like the next generation of royalty is secured because these guys get 10 pregnancy tries. That is a lot. Well, I guess they better get to work then. Edward is very happy about this. He basically just picked the prettiest girl he could see out of the middle class and was like, yep, that's who I want to be with. Look at them go. Hopefully, um, Edward enjoys himself. Oh, wow. Wow. That went well. And he's quite satisfied from that. So I might leave these two in wedded bliss and head back to the Hawthorne family, but I'm sure we're going to have a baby to see between them very soon. Hopefully it survives. So I've brought the Hawthorne family to the community garden so they're able to vote on what it's going to be next week because I think we still have like a day that we're able to vote or maybe just like a few hours. So I'm just going to let them all vote. Um, I would like it. Oh, wait, actually, did we already vote for a marketplace? Because it's already on 13. Maybe I came last time. God, I forget everything. I have no idea what's going on half the time. Okay, well, it seems that we've already voted for the marketplace, which is good because that's what I want it to be. So while we're at the garden, um, I just wanted to remind you all that we were introduced to Clementine when Alaric basically found her out in the streets. She was homeless, she was cold alone in the rain during the famine, and Alaric gave her food. And so Clementine's backstory is basically that during the famine her family disappeared and she doesn't really know what happened to them. And she sort of made peace with the fact that she's married to Alaric and married into this new family, but given the fact that she has a bunch of children of her own now, it sort of brought back these feelings of wishing that her parents were there, wishing that her brother was there. So she's decided to ask around and see if anyone has any information on what happened to her parents. And so we have Agnes Crumplebottom here, who is someone who is like very well versed in town law. So Clementine's just going to talk to Agnes and see if she knows anything about her family. So Agnes is basically explaining that Clementine's mother and father were very good friends with Hermia Underwood, who is the mother of Viola and Sebastian Underwood. And this was back when, you know, Sebastian and Viola were babies. And she says um, she doesn't know much, but maybe if Clementine is interested in knowing some more about her family, she should go and talk to either Sebastian or Viola. And Clementine's thinking, well, Viola is my sister-in-law, so maybe I should go over to their house and see if Viola knows anything about her mother or father or maybe what happened to her family or give any clues about things that she could follow up on. And it is raining now, so I'm going to send them home. So it's early afternoon and Clementine's actually feeling pretty good, so I could go have her talk to Viola now or I could perhaps go tomorrow. Actually, we probably should do it today because I think Clementine gives birth tomorrow, so she's probably not going to want to go and visit Viola when she's, you know, so close to giving birth. So she's going to bring Alaric with her just because, you know, it's Alaric's uncle. 
So Clementine's just asking Viola if she knows anything about her parents or their disappearance since Agnes told Clementine that um, her parents were friends with Viola's mother and Viola explains that her mother was friends with Clementine's parents when she and Sebastian were young so she actually remembers Clementine's parents relatively well. They were toddlers at the time. So Viola's family was originally from France and as you guys probably know they were all spellcasters. Um, their father, Lysander, was hunted down and burned at the stake by a group of witch hunters that were seeking out spellcasters and persecuting them. So Hermia fled to England with her children to escape that group's persecution. And Clementine's parents were the ones that ended up taking in Hermia and Viola and Sebastian and looking after them and helping them build a life in England. And so they were all really close. However, a year after Clementine was born, Hermia actually just got a very average wound infection and fell ill and died. And that's why Clementine doesn't know or remember Hermia at all. So Clementine is just going to thank Viola for sharing the information with her. Um, even though it doesn't really help her understand what happened to her parents, she's still glad to have a bit more information about her parents' past and maybe there could be some clues in there that'll help her discover what happened to them and hopefully if they're still alive, she can find them. And she also has a little brother that she would really love to reconnect with. He was just a baby when they went missing. So she's really hoping that she can at least discover what happened to her family. And so I'm going to send these guys home now because they do have some babies of their own look after and this household is just chaotic with all of these kids oh my gosh what happened to her foot okay so it seems like grace has twisted her ankle and yet you're still playing on the monkey bars i would like to finish at least this level of alaric's aspiration so maybe eventually we can get him another reward trait he currently has a super green thumb trait so i think he would benefit definitely from having some more special traits you know as the heir you get some special treatment i don't know if anyone else has like enough oh clementine actually has quite a few quite a few available points what do we want to give clementine she has like four thousand i would like to give her the fertile one but it says it's not available it might be because she's pregnant so i might just wait for her to have the baby and then i'll give her the fertile trait and hopefully we'll just have like a ton of kids Oh wait, actually, you know what I completely forgot to do is I have to take out the money for Sybil's dowry. So we have to pay the Fairfields 5,000. So that leaves us with 1,477 simoleons. Oh no, Clementine has high blood sugar. What can she do? Drink some water. An unwanted pregnancy. Oh my god. I think Geraldine had the gestational diabetes as well. Okay, I might have her drink some water and hopefully that'll help because they don't have any insulin that I can give her. So everyone is awake, um, however I am going to head over to the Valois household where Eleanor is about to give birth to yet another baby to hopefully help her secure a line as a spare to Augustine. So here we have Eleanor who is giving birth yet again to another baby and hopefully this one survives because we did have such good luck last time. She lost both of her twins that she gave birth to. So she's very eager to have another boy just to spare to Augustine in case he doesn't make it. And she did. She had a little baby boy. What are we going to call him? So we're going to call the baby, oh my god, don't make me say this with a French R. Richard, which is kind of a French version of Richard, which was her grandfather's name. My French is not very good if you can't tell. I already got the last name wrong and now <laughs> I can't even pronounce the baby's names. But we're going to do our dice roll for them to see um, how they survived the birth. So first we're going to do Eleanor and we are rolling an 11. Fine, perfect. And now for the baby, we are rolling a 9, which is fine. So she has another baby survive. So Eleanor's pr feeling pretty comfortable right now. She has her air, she has her spare. And things are really looking up for her. So we're going to leave these guys to enjoy their new family and head back to the main household. Nobody wants to have a baby. Like everyone's just having all these unwanted pregnancies. I feel like I need to start just like making them like want to have children. Doctor visit needed. Oh my God. Hopefully she's okay because we really want to give her that fertility trait. We really want to have like a lot more babies. So Clementine, you just need to hold up. Also, you need to find out what happened to your family. You have lots of reasons to be here. Okay, this garden is looking absolutely 
really chaotic. That is a great job, um, but I'm gonna have to go and fix all these up because they are like all over the place. There you go, the garden is looking so much better now that everything has been moved around a little bit. Oh, I feel like a bunch of our like Pied Piper stuff disappeared. It is a constant struggle. I'm gonna deal with this later because I can't be bothered right now. I, is our, our loom still there? I swear we had, I swear our dairy thing has disappeared and our honey processor has disappeared. Sybil is just happened to come over and so I'm just letting her and Alara catch up because you know, it's been like a whole two days since they've seen each other. So I wish I could interact with Gertrude. Like what if I, what if I just sell her and then buy a new cow? Do you think that'll work? I'm sorry Gertrude, I didn't want to sell you but oh, this isn't working very well is it? Okay, can I sell like the whole the whole thing maybe? Okay, well it's working now so that's all I really wanted. I don't know what happened to Gertrude but who is this? What's her name? Clover. The triplets age up on the first day of 1322 so I am very excited to have them aging up even though Clementine's having a baby it shouldn't be triplets. I know I want to give her the fertility trait and I know I'm doing this to myself but I feel like the rewards outweigh the difficult times. I just need to keep them occupied so that they're not at home too much so they don't have to deal with the babies like every day. Okay I'm gonna send everyone to bed and then tomorrow is going to be the last day of 1321 and hopefully the day that Clementine has her new little baby. So it is morning and today is the day when Clementine has her baby so who knows when that's going to happen. I think she's having it today. I'm pretty sure. Alaric, stop being so mean to her. <gasps> Look at that friendship. I feel like he's being mean to everyone though. Like, I don't think it's just her. I think he's like just being a mean person for some reason. Can you guys like get your relationship up a little bit? Oh wait, she's going into labor. Oh my gosh. Okay, Alaric, you need to be helpful and supportive during this time. And she's had a baby girl. I'm actually really happy about that. I, I just wanted the boys for the airship, but I feel like it is nice having a girl around the house. And we are gonna call her Daphne, which I think is a very pretty name. A little girl, four babies, yet again, not for long though. Anyway, let's do our death rolls. So first we're going for Clementine. She's rolled a seven, she's fine, of course she is. And now for little baby Daphne, we are rolling, please let her live. No, 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 I didn't want that to happen. I was so excited to have a little girl and now she is dying. So little Daphne unfortunately did not make it. Alari, stop being so mean. Apologize and maybe like support her a little bit. Like that's a thought. Ulysses and Marcelia were never like this. They had a perfect relationship. These two just struggle with each other. Like I think they like each other but they don't seem to get along that well. Okay well my heart is well and truly broken. At least Clementine still has these three which hopefully we'll be able to age up okay when they become toddlers next year. Um, I'm gonna give her the fertility trait though because reward store. I think I can give it to her now. This reward is not available to your sim or is already owned by a sim. Okay so I guess I can't give it to her. I don't know what should we give her then? I feel like the seldom sleepy would be good because she gets woken up by babies all the time. Yeah I might just give her the seldom sleepy because I feel like it's good. She's always so tired with all the babies and hopefully she will have more babies that will actually survive so I'm going to give her that one. I'm going to leave it there for today guys. Thank you so much for watching. Next year hopefully Clementine will be able to find out some more information about what what happened to her family and we also have the triplets aging up so we'll get to see whether they survive or not and hopefully we do have an heir for next generation anyway thank you so much for watching and i'll see you next time bye